on October 4, 2024. We have met compliance with official notification. Roll call, please. Rook Taylor. Here. Nick Schumacher here. Sarah Schubert McCone. Here. Ed Gallagher. Here. Nick Olson. Here. Lord Gapsky. Here. President Stephen Olson. Here. This time, would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This meeting is a meeting of the Board of Education held in public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business and is not to be considered a public community meeting. There is a time for comments by members of the public during the meeting as indicated on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to address the board on any of the topics included on tonight's agenda may do so by signing up on the public comment sign-up sheet by the entrance prior to the start of the meeting. The board requests refraining from making any comments involving personally identifiable information about students, staff, or administration. Comments should be respectful, focused on the items being considered by the board, and will be restricted to three minutes in length. And did we have anybody sign up to speak this evening? No. Okay. Next then is disposition of minutes from September 9, 2024. We'll need a motion to motion approve. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion is second to approve the minutes from September 9, 2024. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On a report from the superintendent last Monday evening the, at the Committee of the Whole on October 7th, Principal Kim O'Donnell gave a Four Corners Elementary School update. And there is a link that you can click on to see her report. Do you want to take the new ones or do you want me to read them? Or? You can. I, okay, I'll do them. Um, new informational items, Superior High School updates, student representative, and we certainly welcome you here tonight, Taylor McMeekin. Welcome, Taylor. Thanks welcome. for being here. Got a speech prepared? Yes, she does. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you're up. Yeah, you can start. Okay, um, I'll start off with homecoming We had that we had two weeks ago. Um, this year we had a new par parade route, um, which we thought went very well. Our student council advisors having a meeting with the city in a couple of weeks, I think, to talk about it. And we'll see about for next year where the route will be. Um, we had the most floats that we've had since before COVID, so that was good. Um, we heard a, a lot of good things about the assembly um, from teachers. They said it was the most energetic and smooth assembly that they've seen in a while. Um, we had two, two weeks of homecoming this year, kind of, because we started dress up days a week earlier and saw a lot of participation, so that was good. We had Powder Buff, our men's volleyball tournament, and Powder Puff, our ladies' football, and those both went very well. Who won? Um, the seniors. Oh, okay. <laughs> seniors. <laughs> um, yeah, Powder Puff had really good sportsmanship this year, which was kind of the best that we've seen in a while. So that was good. Um, a little look into the future. We're currently in the process of planning a fright night for the end of October. Um, we'll have like a haunted hallway and Halloween movie and pumpkin decorating, partnering with DECA. Um, fall ball is October 19th, held at UWS. And then our kind of goal for student council this year is to host an event on the first Wednesday of every month. Um, so that's just kind of a goal. Like after school? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like this um, month was our powder buff. Okay. And then so we have a couple ideas for that. We'll see how well it goes. Um, kind of like a school wide thing, the phone policy. Um, teachers do report fewer problems with the cell phone use. Um, students are obviously still getting used to it and they obviously don't really love it, but um, they liked having the opportunity to have it at lunch last year and upset that that changed this year. But otherwise, I think it's going pretty good getting used to it. That's all. All right. I know something to talk about with the parade route too is. 
this year being there, I know the middle school couldn't attend. So that's a, something to consider when you guys are discussing that. So, yeah. But you had uh, Northern Lights and I think Great Lakes. Yeah. Yeah, we had, yeah, we had a, yeah. a good elementary mm -hmm. turnout. Yeah, that's good. And so Brian. I think Brian, Brian even oh, yeah, they brought a bus. Yep, yep, yep. Right. So, yeah, so we'll see how that one goes. And I accidentally came across everything being live streamed. I was actually looking for a past board meeting, but I came across the live stream. <laughs> All the homecoming, and gym, and the power puff and football stuff going on. You did that, the high school, or did you do that? Oh, you did that. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> well done. That was nice to see more people. Yeah, that was a need from uh, Four Corners. They you know, well, want <laughs> to like, we still participate in some way, so I worked with Ella to get that. Up and running, and they were able to show up to some of the classes. So that was really mm -hmm. cool. Oh, that's great. Feels like a good start to the school year. Yeah. Yeah, yes, it does. All right. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks, Taylor. Uh, also, another new item uh, the Scott Anderson Leadership Foundation freshman orientation updates from, are we going to have them from? Yes. So, Billy Daniel and Caitlin. So we're still, we still want to get kids in front of our board and sharing some of the updates. And I had said to um, Ms. Sigfrid, are you kind of helping with this? You guys can come on up if you want. Or um, I thought this would be a nice thing to give the, up, the board an update that our students participate in this each year. So thanks for being here, you guys. Thank you. We'd love to hear a little bit about what this experience is. And um, so yeah, we brought two of our finest to speak with you tonight in addition to Taylor. This is Emily and this is Caitlin, and they're going to talk about two opportunities they both were involved in over the summer and at the start of the school year. So, right. so I'm going to be speaking about the Scott Anderson Leadership Forum, um, which is called South. So it was a week long leadership training that was held at the College of St. Scholastica. It was uh, I'm pretty sure the first week we got out of school this summer um, and it was all different schools from around the area. We had a lot of Duluth schools. I believe we were the only Wisconsin school mm -hmm. um, and it was open to incoming juniors and seniors. We had to get nominated from SHS staff and then there was an application process we had to go through. So um, only a certain amount of students were accepted and we had 15 SHS students that were there in attendance. Um, so it's Scott Anderson, it's his um, foundation. That's it. It's his foundation. He was a outdoor adventurer, as it says up there. He was just a really big person in the community, but he sadly passed away flying or test flying a plane for Sears aircraft. Um, and his family started a foundation in his memory and they used it to build this um, whole thing. I know that they do some other things, but South is like their big thing. Um, and it was really cool getting to learn his story. We met his parents on the first day. They came in and spoke to us, kind of gave their experience living with him. So we didn't have to just like read off of a PowerPoint. They actually came and talked to us about him and a little bit about him. Um, and so we got to meet a lot of new students. They divided us into different groups. Um, there you can see, I believe that top picture's from the first day and then the bottom picture's from a few days later. So we kind of got to connect with the community um, and the different groups, uh, only one to two students per school were in a group. So it would be you with all other kids that you've never met before, ideally. And so up here is the group that I was in. And in the picture in the left, <laughs> we're volunteering at Second Harvest Food Bank. On one of the days we dedicated about half a day just to volunteering in different local communities. And I think we got a lot out of that and it was a really great experience overall. So this is my group. Uh, we got sent to the Hartley Nature Center um, and we spent, I believe it was four hours hauling sand and rocks um, because they had a lot of washed out trails. And so they needed the trails rebuilt. And he said that it was a project that would have taken him along two weeks that we got done four hours. Um, and it was a really great experience. So that is, you'll see I'm wearing the t-shirt um, they had given us all to do our community service in. Um, and then that bottom picture off to the side where we're all in blindfolds was a really fun thing we got to do for some team building. I believe it was before we went to do our community service projects together. Um, and so I wasn't allowed to use my arms, I believe. So somebody had to guide me and I had a blindfold on. It was crazy. <laughs> I think I had to sign a piece of paper with a marker in my mouth. 
<laughs> it was an interesting experience. Rob was really fun. Um, in regards to my group, I'm still friends with a lot of them. We still talk in our group chat. And I think that I built some really close relationships with some students from over the bridge that I don't think I would have gotten to know without this. Um, some highlights is that every day we heard from inspirational speakers. Um, I learned about a lot of people's life experiences, which is pretty crazy. We, I heard some from some really great speakers um, and a lot of them are like interactive. We got to hear from the Duluth mayor. Um, down on the bottom left, that is one of our other students from SHS that went. Uh, but yeah, I think we had the max we have is four speakers in one day, four or five, um, but they had at least two every day, which is really cool. So there's a group of SHS students. Um, on day four, we had our school administrators come in and talk to us. Um, they kind of want to speak to us about what we learned, what we can take back to SHS. I think we talked to them for a good amount of time. We came with a lot of really good ideas that we've already started implementing in the school. So that was really cool um, to be able to put what we learned somewhere, especially right away, because if I would have done this and came back in September and then told my school like this is what's going on, I think I would have it would have been a little bit more difficult, but being able to bring our school administrators there and kind of just show them this is what we've been doing and this is what we did in the last few days. It was really, really nice to be able to put my work and explain it to somebody. Else. Can you give an example of one thing you implemented? Um, we learned that we could put like this leadership skills into um, what we started this year, which is the next thing we're going to talk about, which is ninth grade orientation. Okay. Um, me specifically, when I was working with my students, um, I did some really cool like team building exercises with my ninth graders, oh. um, which they ended up enjoying. They were so sure about it. Uh, I had them holding hands, and that was a little too much for them. But I had a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed being able to like actually feel like I was doing a lot because I knew what was more impactful. I knew that working with them hands on would be more impactful than giving them a worksheet and saying, "Okay, this is what we have to do today." Um, the key takeaways from this was we learned to follow our own morals and stay true to what we believe in. That was a big thing that uh, our speakers emphasized, staying true to what you want, even if it's not what's surrounding you, um, which I didn't really expect going into this. I kind of feel like I left a completely different person because they talked about a lot of things that I didn't expect them to get into. Um, one day we talked about our hardest challenges with our group, which is not something I would have ever expected to get into with a ton of kids I'd only met three days earlier, but it was really good. Um, I had learned a lot about myself at this place, um, but we also learned how to commu communicate with other groups of people, which was really important day one when I had known these people for two minutes and they already had me on a little line um, trying to get us around. And we recognize our skills and surrounding leadership and how we make it even stronger, which was also really important when it came to ninth grade leadership this year. So how we apply what we learned, we had asked ourselves the question, what is Superior High School missing? And so we understand that the transition from middle school to high school can be difficult for a lot of SMS students, especially because they don't get a staggered start like um, they do in the middle school as opposed to the high school. And so um, we wanted to take our skills from Scott Anderson and apply them with freshman orientation. And so for this day, we had all nine grade students attend a partial day for a freshman orientation on August 22nd. And there were 24 junior and senior students that served as mentors. And we all got these shirts and they were said, oh, oh you were selling on me, yeah. And all of the freshmen as well got t-shirts just about freshman orientation and it helped us know like who's who and who you can go to for help. And so everyone got a half day training prior to that. So we knew what we wanted to talk about with all the freshmen. And mentors were responsible for leading their small group of ninth graders. And so right there is what I explained. We got them all t-shirts passed out and all of the groups were divided into those small groups of 20 people or less. And those groups are also going to be their advisory throughout high school. So they'll be with those kids every day for 30 minutes in class, and that'll be leading up to their senior year. 
And so before we split everyone into the groups, Mr. Fessy gave a speech to all communal freshmen, just introducing them to the high school and what they're going to be experiencing as freshmen. And then each group got a tour of SHS and the mentors explained all the areas like attendance, buses, where you leave, stuff like that, just all the basics you need to know to get through high school. And then like Emily was talking about, we did a lot of small group activities like icebreakers just so everyone can get to know each other because obviously these kids are going to be with each other throughout their senior year. So we want to make sure that everybody's comfortable with each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might have just missed it. Probably did. You say you stay with the ninth graders throughout or you do see them? advisory group so they're going to be with them throughout ninth grade until 12th grade in an advisory period where basically we just kind of learn different things about school like school rules <clears throat> um we gave them yeah we gave them a tour we kind of talked about what to expect um we'll also be checking in with these groups every month for the rest of the school year which is really cool um so they met us before their school year started, and now we'll be checking in, asking how grades are, doing different activities with them, kind of gauging how they've been doing, um, just kind of asking, do they need tutoring help? If they have any questions, um, we had a meeting today about our next meeting with them because we haven't spoken to them much since. But I know one thing that we're hoping to go over is like standards based grading, what to expect now that the first quarter is coming to an end, um, because now once this next quarter starts, they'll be able to see their letter grade. So just kind of keeping it in mind that they should be really gauging where they're at. Um, and that is a little different than the middle school um, when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. But we're also going to be just like asking how it's been going, what we can do to change. Um, I know another thing we're going to talk about is there anything that they didn't feel prepared for that we probably could go over for next year's ninth graders because this is so new. Um, we're just kind of gauging what went well, what didn't, and what we can do to improve it because we had a pretty good turnout, but now that we have done one, we're hoping that we get an even better turnout next year. Yeah, this is a fantastic, awesome job, really. Did you guys know about the leadership opportunities that our kids have in the summer? Is that new information? Is that? Okay, yeah, I figured. We need I was gonna ask. Either for you guys or Mr. Fezzi or Ms. Sigfrids, um, what what are you guys, what are the staff looking for as far as nominating you to these positions? It was offered to all the South kids after we had talked to them about what we had done and leadership stuff that we had gone through. Um, so I a good chunk of the people that were there were in South, but also it was offered to student council kids. Okay. So it was a mix of South and student council people that were there. And for South, yeah, they would do an application after you were nominated to get into South. What kinds of things were they looking for in that application? Um, a lot of questions like why do you want to do this? Okay. Like what makes it important to you? Well, excellent job. Yes, yes. thank really you. Proud of what you've done. It'd yeah, be great so to get an update like towards the end of the year to see like what feedback you guys are getting, you know, challenges or what you're planning for next are going year. well and what you're planning for next year. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. Juniors. So like, yeah, you're senior, senior. You're senior. Okay, so you won't be <laughs> good feedback. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do juniors automatically stay in next year? I don't know. Um, that's Mr. Amerson and Miss Noel. It's kind of keeping track of those kids. Um, I think that they're looking for most of the same kids, but I, I'm not sure. I think that'd be a good thing to find. It's nice because it's a rollover. We've been involved in the program. Yes, because they're the ones that gave the most feedback today in the meeting. Um, they kind of focused in on the juniors, asking them what they exactly. thought, um, looking for their opinions on changing next year because they would be able to put that into next year. So my guess is yes. It's a program that we've been involved in since its inception. Um, so 20 some years now. Hmm. Originally it was Rory Johnson who was at Superior Cathedral here as a phi ed teacher who helped run it, but active all the time. We've always had superior students in it. So very proud of what you're doing. Thank you for coming, guys. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. And, and the leadership <laughs> opportunities for kids. Ella, we've got our sportsmanship leadership yep. coming here, the WIA. Yep, in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, took the group to Virginia, Minnesota last week for another leadership opportunity. And kids are 
engage. They do really great things. Um, but yeah, the CISA, CISA group is going to be here on November 14th. 14th, I think. Right. It's a lot of opportunities for our students in our district. Mm -hmm. Next, our middle school principal, Mr. Aaron Liebers. Thank you for recognizing a problem and fixing it. You said you got it. Good afternoon, everybody. So good to see you all. Uh, thanks for letting me do this today instead of last week. So I'm going to jump in and I'm going to show you what's been going on at the middle school this uh, the 24 school year. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I knew my audience today, so I have to start with this. This is the staff case kicking off uh, with all of our staff, and we took gold medal in the uh, in the uh, tug of war. We are doing that, really. There's a little controversy around this. I know. Oh, yes. There's no video for that. See. Oh, there is actually. Uh, Aaron Fezzi has it for you. He's like a soup tape. Yeah. To the tape. Yeah. Is there steroids involved? <laughs> so you can see why I put this in. <laughs> Our staff, it was a really great kickoff to the school year. Um, so some celebrations, you know, SMS, great place to work and learn. But uh, our attendance is up. Our, our scores and fast grades and board exam are improving. Um, Stafford can continue to work to create that positive learning environment, right? So we've been working really hard these last couple of years on, on, on these big items. Um, we talked about this last year. Our attendance was kind of uh, in, a, in a dismal state and, and uh, proud to say that we improved it by 10 points last year. And I included a picture in here. I think it's one of the, one of the, Many reasons why things are improving attendance-wise. So this is a, a, one of our cross-country groups uh, from our intramural program. So uh, that just kicked off again this year. Um, we've, we've had over a third of our students participate in after-school after intramurals last year, and, and it's only going to get bigger um, this year. So we've already seen evidence of that with our few intramurals that we started at the beginning of the school year. So really intentional about creating a, a place where Kids want to be, and our staff want to be, and and this is one of those things I'm really proud of. We've got a lot of uh, dedicated staff that are really making this thing possible. So kind of a cool thing. Um, and then our this is a, this is one of the assemblies from last year um, or this year. Sorry, it's just another opportunity for kids to come together. We celebrate some positive things with our students, uh, student body. So. They get to play some games and the, the crowd goes wild. They, could, they get a lot of encouragement to compete in some of these games. They've got some sort of contraption on their head and they have to knock over those water bottles. <laughs> but it's just a lot of fun and just recognizing the good things that are going on in our school. Uh, some of our challenges are our math literacy scores are lower than what we want them to be. Um, some of the things that we've put into place to address that we have intervention teachers in our, in, for math and ELA, and we started off interventions right away at the beginning of the school year. We used the data from last year. We got kids uh, starting with that first week of school. So our Spartan Start really provides us that opportunity to, to dive in and, and, and help support students in those areas. And so we'll rotate students through every six to 12 weeks in those interventions um, during Spartan Start if they need it. So that's a really, uh, really positive thing that we started the middle of last year and we really wanted to kick off the beginning of the school year. Our CIP team met this August and uh, our goal for this year is to increase the number of students making modest, typical or aggressive growth on fast bridge ELA exam. Um, our goal last year was 83% uh, and we want to increase it to 100%. So we want to see, and I'll show a little bit of a graph here next. We want to just see really our kids growing from whatever category that they're in. We want to see them growing into the next category. So this is kind of like a breakdown of our, our <coughs> growth in fall of spring last year. So 84% of our kids you know, showed some improvement, but the, the far left categories, that's 16% that didn't show any growth. So we want to, we want to improve that to 100%. So make sure that 
Our kids are moving towards the right uh, from red to purple. Uh, so that's kind of a just a visual representation of what we're trying to achieve. And that's our benchmark, our fast bridge and assessments. We'll do that fall, winter, and spring. So we'll see some growth through that through the year. Some of the action steps that we put in place to help support that goal. Um, we're checking in with our PLCs each week. Uh, their their agendas are updated, and they're using data at the at their meetings to um, demonstrate what the students learn and what they still need to work on. Um, we've been talking about grading practices. We've created some common expectations. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later. But um, communicating with our families to demonstrate the growth that our students are seeing, right, and updating those uh, comments and grades in Power School. Um, ongoing literacy strategies. So that's also another thing that happens during Spartan Start. Uh, we have monthly training in place for our staff to the uh, so that they can deliver that um, strategy each month of the school year. And we've we've got some things in place to help the classroom environment, PBIS, bar, and restorative practices. And um, we're really wanting to uh, support those classroom environments. Uh, so our, we've got deans and assistant principals, and we're willing to go in and, and help out uh, our teachers. And if they need to have a restorative conversation with the students <laughs> that's part of their classroom, one of a dean or a AP or myself even will, or one of our coaches will go in and watch that classroom so that teacher can have or do some problem solving with the, the students. So some of the things that are going on at the middle school. Uh, here's an example of PBIS tours at the beginning of the school year. That's that you heard a little bit from the seniors just a minute ago about the staggered starts is one of the things that we are able to do with our seventh and eighth graders on one day and our sixth graders get the building to themselves on, on the second day and uh, get the tours throughout the building and this is what they're they're learning about work respect belonging in the library and then of course uh, day one of the school year we had a, a wonderful visitor this year and that was pretty cool and our our student reps and student leaders did a great job of providing a tour to the to the governor at the first day of school kind of last minute uh, opportunity but it was that's how he works <laughs> Uh, in two days. OK, already. Uh, it worked out pretty, pretty slick. They did, they did a fantastic job. And brand new admin team. Uh, Mary and P retired last year. Gary and Katie got jobs over in Duluth. And uh, and I'm, I'm really in June. I was a little worried, stressed. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. We got it. Yeah. But we hired uh, Three new assistant principals this year, uh, Shannon on the left, and Sam and Middle and, and John. And uh, John was uh, previously a dean. Sam, of course, did a lot of work at uh, Great Lakes by a teacher. And Shannon's coming new to us, so um, but they are doing a wonderful job. And, and, uh, Lots of positive feedback from not only the teachers but the parents too. Yeah. So it's I really good. Be, I couldn't be happier. So uh, great, that stress great. went away pretty quickly, and uh, <laughs> we're we're doing really well. So there, there's your SMS update. Any questions? So before, but the intramural thing I think is great for mm -hmm. kids to have something extra to connect with different kids outside of just the learning hours. And I seen it last year. I think it was very beneficial, and so I hope it continues to grow on there's plenty more intramural stuff for the kids this year. It creates good connections for kids, so it, it's more than just the intramural. It's about the relationships and having fun. And, and there's something age. for almost everybody. I mean, really, you have a lot of choices Yeah, we've, throughout the year. We have a yeah. huge variety, mm -hmm. and it's just athletics. Absolutely. There's a variety of things that kids can do, and one of the things that, that that's awkward age, they need something else to do yeah. um, after school. Many of our students don't have something to go do next. And uh, if they're if they're out in the out in the community, they they need a they need a supervised fun activity between the hours of 3 30 and 5 o'clock in my opinion. And and this is providing some David, as a reminder, um, we're not necessarily um, incurring costs for intramurals through our fun 10, correct? Um, well, we're still kind of hitting it, but a little bit to transfer over. Um, the big thing is, in fact, the hearing last year, they set it up where we're offering this to not only our students, but Cathedral and parent advocates and any homeschool kids. 
That way it falls under a front 80 expense, um, which means it doesn't come out of the general fund. It's also the back limit. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I do. All right. Yeah, I continue to hear great things about the behavior, the environment. It's been, it seems to improve. Every year. Improving. It's great. So awesome job by the staff. The they work so hard. They work so hard. Yeah. Positive plug for some recess time for these. I know that's been really helpful. They do have recess. Yeah, they do have recess. Get out they the they around though. I know. We do we need we do need to maybe put some energy around some fundraising or two and around fresh air and just getting out. Use the term loosely. <laughs> <laughs> Outside time after lunch. Yeah, you go. Uh, there you go. That'd yeah, be nice to go into a, a, a contained <laughs> kind of space where they can do some uh shirts. <laughs> yeah. Loved or the yeah. Yeah, but but they they need it. And they do. They do. It's the when the governor was here, he said, "What what can I help you with?" And one kid said, um, "We need we need a playground." And I was like, "Yeah." Then we kind of hear that. Yeah. Yeah, we need a space. Yeah, thing. Yeah. Playground, a living room. Right. A contained. Yeah. It's good. And they get they get ten or fifteen minutes okay. outside and yeah, quite you can work. yeah they do some serious energy. I want to this is one way. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> the hallway after lunch is really nice. They're coming back a little more calm. Yeah. Back to wing, and that's a good thing. Yep. So, thank, thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Action items on the report <laughs> from our superintendent: uh, approval of Phase One strategic planning recommendations, the mission, vision, commitments, and the district pillars. Motion to approve. Again. Motion the second to approve phase one of our mission, vision, commitments, and our district pillars. Is there any further discussion? Just a reminder, we're going to have our phase two conversation on Wednesday. So I'm looking forward to what that will bring. That will we'll create goals and objectives around how we want to um, reach our, our district vision. That will come back to and then we'll bring that back in November then uh, so. November. We'll bring that back in November. Yeah. Right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed motion carries. There were no discussion items. We'll move on to the board committee reports, the operations committee, no action items, no discussion items, informational items at the committee of the whole on October 7. Director of Food Service, Jamie Wilson, provided department updates, and you can click on that link to see what those were all about. Motion to accept the operations committee report. Second. Motion to second to accept the operations committee report. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Teaching and learning, no action items, no discussion items, no informational items. Yeah, just, yeah. Uh, just serious. Until you turn the page. <laughs> <laughs> All right. New secondary grading update. SSH or SSH teacher Andy Wolf, SMS teacher Dan Whitaker, SHS principal Aaron Fezzi, principal Aaron Liebers, technology support specialist Casey Smith have an update for us on secondary grading. You guys want to come up? <laughs> <laughs> so let me can i tee it up just a little bit does that sound okay so um i can share this with the board in our weekly update but what they're going to talk through tonight we have high school uh, middle school and casey will kind of share our district perspective we put together um some new kind of guidelines this summer and so they're going to kind of cover those guidelines what was established last uh june through really now and kind of what we've been working on that sound fair? Sounds great. Okay, so you're up. So we started um, early in, it was June 11th actually, and uh, a shared leadership team from the middle school and the shared leadership team from the high school got together and Amy and uh, Crystal and Kate were all there. And we really put a lot of energy into figuring out what were some of the biggest issues that we just really needed to address. Um, <clears throat> it was boiled down to four. And those were communication, especially with parents and families, um, formative work, formative work, motivation, um, reassessment, and then um, rating calculation. So uh, got to work and met again on August 1st. And this time we invited um, not just our shared leadership teams, but um, 
people from outside of the other teachers as well. Some of the department heads and some other teachers came to that as well. So we threw the net as wide as we could, got as many people into that discussion as possible. Um, what we're doing now um, to, in regards to those issues is we are, I think if I had to like make one main point, it would be that we're trying to use PowerSchool as the main communication tool um, with our families. If I had to boil it down to most important thing, I would probably say that's our main initiative that we're trying to do with this. But here are some specifics. One, the grading calculation. Um, we now have two choices. So a teacher um, or a PLC, if you're working with other teachers, you had to have an agreement on this. You couldn't go vote and do your own thing, but you could either choose to do an averaging to a mean um, or you could take the highest. And what, what I specifically mean by that is if you have a standard uh, and you have more than one summative assessment, right? We're now, we, it used to be just the highest, whatever the highest score that a student had, that became their score for that standard at the end of the semester. And then it's averaged in with their other standard scores. Well, now we have these two options. Um, that's based on the fact that some, some teachers are saying, look it, um, sometimes when I give a summative, it's on really different content. And so we could see why they would do that. I'll just, as an example, as a writing teacher in a journalism class, if I'm having students um, use this writing standard and I only have one, on a sports writing piece that looks really different than um, when they go to do a news writing piece or an entertainment piece or something like that. And so um, some teachers are using that mean and some teachers are staying with the highest. Um, the, it does have to be communicated out. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, so this is another thing that we really doubled down on. We actually added this as um, something that we're doing, which is every class now has a class description given on PowerSchool, so any parent can see it. And we've asked that um, everybody put in your syllabus or some sort of a class or course description. And you also have in there what your grading calculation method is that you're using. And we also ask that you put in there for parents to know what other kinds of feedback are kids getting and where else might be getting that? Because of course, kids are not gonna see all the feedback that goes to a kid in power schools. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely impossible. So um, that's there. The other thing that we're doing is we are, we're making sure that we use what's called a common formative assessment. We call it a CFA, but it's a common formative assessment. So if there's three teachers teaching a class, all right? They are all in agreement that there will be this formative assessment that looks something similar to the test or the final or the summative uh, assessment. It comes out, they, they give it in the class, and then we will put that in PowerSchool. That comes with feedback. It either shows you where you've arrived on the proficiency scale, whether it be a one, a two, a three, a four, or there may be a comment in there showing maybe what learning target within the proficiency scale that student needs to work on. We're doing one or other, one or, one or the other, or both. Uh, <clears throat> so, and then the last thing I, I guess I'll mention about the grading is that there are some, some teachers that just by the design of their classes and the design of their curriculum, you could see anything that's really project-based with big projects like an art class, things like that, where it can be difficult maybe to have a live data summative um, by the first progress report, eight weeks in. So, what we're doing now is we are saying, all right, we get this, all right? And what, what we're gonna do is if we can't provide a summative, we're going to provide some description of where this class is at so that parents will see that. Here are standards that are being taught at this moment, and here's when you will see the summative coming. So that will be now on the proxy report. So um, the only other thing I wanted to mention, and it's not directly related to grading, but something I'm just really proud of what we're doing. Last year, we spent a lot of time because, because motivation is constant at concern. When you hear people say things um, in regards to, well, it's hard to get kids to do all the work that's not being graded. Um, we're looking at all kinds of ways to get kids engaged. If kids are engaged, they'll do it. And so we started this work last year and we're continuing it this year. Um, and we're trying to get um, we're trying all of us to just make three commitments. One of them is um, to make sure that we have thinking tasks, tasks that actually require kids to do hard thinking, critical thinking. 
We're also um, trying to find ways to keep kids in that productive struggle. Uh, we're using a number of strategies to do that. And we're, this is across the whole building. We're trying to get kids in every class as much as possible to be involved in collaboration and discussion. Again, I know that's not directly related to grading, but uh, I, I actually do think it's all related, to be honest with you. So. And this is all just at the high school level that it's you're high school. Oh, okay. I'm speaking for Why don't we give a middle school and a district update and then why don't we take questions? Because there might be some things that pertain to all. Does that sound okay? Does that feel okay? All right. Some of what I'll say probably sounds a little bit like what Andy was talking about. We're in the same meeting, same groups um, with SLT and, and the grading group. Um, we were focusing a little bit more maybe toward the communication piece for middle school. A lot of times between us and home, uh, that's where some of the pieces fall apart a little bit. Uh, so we we broke it down uh, with the idea that we're, we're strengthening that positive learning environment and relationship home. Uh, one item is that we're using comments and and or the scores in PowerSchool to share with families how students are doing on formative and summative assessments. Uh, looking at communicating home every week, we have a family engagement time that every teacher that has uh, the Spartan starts, we communicate home with what's happening, uh, positive, negative, otherwise, you know, just letting them know what's happening. Uh, front loading how to use PowerSchool. Sometimes, um, like we have some parents that try to use the app, you get a different result in the app than you do on the website. Uh, so we tried to do some training with that, get it front loaded out, and then ongoing, like at conferences in a couple of weeks, we'll be giving some reminders about how to use PowerSchool. Uh, and then keeping in mind that our parents don't always have access to Google Classroom the same way that our students do. Uh, so if, if the kid's logging in at home, they can see something different, but if they're not able to access it at home or don't have their password, whatever, uh, that parents don't always see the stuff we have in classrooms. So we have to ensure that both of those things communicate effectively. Um, we're focusing on making sure that we have enough formatives in PowerSchool to justify uh, success on our summatives. So if it be a couple of, of formative items or many, uh, we make sure that there's a minimum of one formative, uh, common to formative assessment, like you heard Andy talking, uh, before each summative. And then there's also a comment that goes in with that one providing some feedback before we hit our summative piece. Uh, we look for at least one summative per quarter to show progress and understanding of whatever standards are being taught that quarter uh, and comments to go along with that. Uh, any ease should only be happening if there's absolutely nothing that we can draw evidence from. Uh, if there is any engagement uh, on formative work, we can use that to supplement in. Uh, we do kind of a blended, you know, using multiple sources in order to give uh, some type of, of credit for the formative work. Um, and if they don't have completed work, again, back to that family engagement time, we're making the weekly calls and contacts on that. Uh, and then within our PLCs, we're making sure that we have the exact same formative and summative items in PowerSchool. So if you looked at my PowerSchool, you would see the exact same items that you would see in the other two science teachers for my PLC. Uh, and then we also at our PLC meetings, we spend a lot of time calibrating how we're scoring so that one teacher isn't seeing things from one perspective and another one is giving threes when somebody else would give twos. Uh, so we spend time creating those assignments, descriptions, uh, the assessments, all of that together uh, so that we ensure consistency there. Uh, and then if we do have a standard that's being graded multiple times, we clarify uh, to families how that's being addressed differently. We heard Andy kind of talking about the same thing uh, so that that is in our syllabus or email or however we're, we're communicating that one out. Uh, and then from the Spartan grade perspective, which is a little different than the high school, uh, we update those consistently through the quarter. We start everybody out at a proficiency, work respect long, stand uh, Spartan grade. Uh, and then if it drops from that three, we make a, a communication home. The first one might be email, just saying, you know, here are some things that we are observing that's causing some disruption or lack of work progress, et cetera. Uh, and then if it if it goes beyond that, then it's it's definitely making a phone contact, so we're not relying on an email being read. 
Uh, and then we have our Spartan grade proficiency table and instructions on that that we've revised to make sure that everybody's consistent with those. Um, your email you sent out to families today was really, really nice and really was helpful trying to figure out where the formative feedback was. And so that was a really nice job. Yeah. And that's we for science, we just completed our first summative assessment. So I sent out a breakdown of here are the here are the scaffolded formative pieces that and here's how you go on to power school and find where the information yeah. is. That was helpful because yeah. sometimes folks put it in for. different places. Yeah. <laughs> it was really good. That's what we're looking at at those. <laughs> All right, how about Casey? Want to come up or are you kind of locked in back there? So one of the biggest things that came up as we were working in June were so many questions from teachers across both the middle school and the high school um, regarding power school, how we were entering grades, how we were using feedback features, but also how families were able to access this information. And so Casey's been a huge um, champion when it comes to trying to figure that out, not only helping teachers, but getting information out to families. So I'll let you give that update. Perfect. We kind of gave ourselves three district-wide goals. Um, one of them was providing ongoing training for our teachers. So we kicked off the school year. I spent an afternoon at the high school. Um, we went through a slideshow. I made sure everybody had a refresher on how to use school. We showed some tips and tricks. Andy worked closely with me, um, giving you know staff some more um, some other tips. Is it safe to say that you and um, Andy and Casey, you guys kind of work together? So when Casey's not there, you're able to provide some of that level of support too to teachers ongoing. Yeah, is that safe to say? Yeah. Um, and so we took that slideshow, we sent it out to staff, and so it's kind of like a uh, all in one how to document also the slideshow was and we shared that with the middle school also. Um, so all teaching staff has the same consistent directions and tips. Um, one of the other things that we're doing weekly, I'm meeting with um, the coach admins at both the middle and high school and we're doing grade book checks. And um, I have such a great partnership with the coaches who we see the issues in the grade book and we go and talk to the teachers right away um, to make sure that families don't see those uh, little issues or something like sometimes the standards forgotten to be added or uh, maybe they forgot to add feedback. So we work together really closely um, to make sure that the teachers are getting the support that they need. Um, another one of our goals is to improve parent training and education regarding power school. Um, one of the things we did at the start of the year is both the middle and high school, we created a brochure that was some basic information about power school, how to get set up, how to use um, the website and the app. We keep pushing out um, that the app, ditch the app. Um, and the message is getting out there. Um, so I have 93.5% of SHS students records have been accessed via the web portal. Um, versus only 69% via the app. And at the middle school, 89.6% um, of students were accessed on the web and only 45 through the app. So I think we're continuing to push out that message that, you know, the app is awesome for like attendance, like where were you fifth hour? Um, but for grading and for the, all that feedback that the teachers are putting in PowerSchool, we really want families to use the um, power school web version. Okay, Casey, for the brochure, are we going to have that information out at both the middle and the high school for conferences too? Well, at the middle school and high school for conferences, we're going to have something better than a oh, brochure. Okay, sorry. We're going to have. Some... I thought we were going to do both, but okay. Well, one's better than the other. Okay. Uh, we're going to offer some device advice sessions. So one on one training if parents have, you know, issues um, getting onto power school or trying to figure out where to find. Um, that information. What does that look like? Like, like, will there be a station set up, or what will that look like? Sure. Oh, we'll, okay. we'll have a space. Okay. Something's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, wait and see. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be confetti. Yeah. yeah. We're trying to be. I I obviously can't be everywhere. So Andy's already volunteered, and Bruce at the middle school. Okay. So, um, we're gonna figure out how that okay. will look, but we're gonna make sure that everybody knows where to. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, the other thing that we've been doing is every every time your school newsletter comes out, I have information about power school in there. Yeah. So this week you'll get 
feedback in power school like where to find it um where there's like three different places that you could see feedback and here's how you find it um we've updated the website i've added a few more graphics so families can find um information how you find you know your standard grades what all those icons mean so we have a big little legend now of all the icons um sometimes a green check mark is all you're going to see in the grade book and that just means that your student did the work and it was turned in um so i think the more that information we can push out to families um through newsletters through teacher emails uh the better and then the one other thing that we have on our list is improving how feedback is provided to students and families and i think both andy and dan did a great job um already touching base on that um we are if you log on to your students power schools you'll see feedback in there um you'll see feedback in the form of a score or a comment or both um and you will be able to see if your students on track with that standard um you know we're not perfect yet but we keep getting better and better and every week when we're pulling some grade book checks and we're having conversations with teachers um i'm pretty confident that families will continue to see that feedback and know how their students are doing before report cards and progress reports come out. I think the biggest thing that we talked about this summer was understanding if our kids were on track um, through the formative work uh, prior to taking a summative. We want, to, we want to be able to know if our child is going to be on track to get a three or is proficient. And if not, how do we help them as parents? um support them if they're not on track i think that's the big question yeah exactly. and i you know we just look at some of that data today and we i i, I don't think we had any great books that had summatives without formatives but we're we're doing great any questions um i'm wondering if aaron and aaron do you guys have anything you want to add or aaron or aaron uh no i don't have anything to add i think the Folks have spoke done a really nice job of explaining it a little better than I could. Uh, Thanks, Casey. Yeah. I think the big thing for us was to make sure that our families be able to check in on their students and see where they're at, uh, especially if they're not going towards uh, conferences. Yeah, I mean, I think Danny and Dan address things. If there's, you know, if there's questions I can answer, it would be great. Please. All right. Um, That's what we got. First of all, I'll say now I understand why I'm getting so many emails from teachers. Got it now. <laughs> um, thank you guys too, and for uh, presenting to us. Um, one question I have, maybe you can elaborate more. Um, you're talking about the common formative assessments, and then I think Dan was talking about there being X amount of formative assessments with the summative per quarter. Do you know? OK, yeah, so. And, and so is that like? Are, are you taking X amount of formative lessons and getting an, ass an assessment? Sounds like a test to me or like a grade before you're moving on to a summative or can you elaborate more on that? Yeah, so we'll we'll break down the work like in our our unit that we just wrapped up. We had our formative work, which is like a practice daily, weekly type of thing. Uh, and then we'll have a common formative assessment where you know each of us, our three teachers, uh, might present material a little bit differently, like with their own voice and you know that. But we use the same materials. We use all of that. But the the CFA is designed. Okay, let's check to see how you did on all of this as a precursor to the actual assessment that's going to be scored. So the CFA is there to see. Okay, where are we at? What do we need to improve before you take your final test? It, it, the equivalent, I would say, is like the behind the wheel for the driver's head. You know, you do your practice, you do your book work, and you start working on it. Then you go out and actually get some feedback on how you're doing with it before you go land the final assessment for it. So that that's where I would put CFAs. You you brought up a good point right there about about a word. You said, you know, I see this word assessment as a test and so forth. I would say in the teacher's shoes, um, we use that word very differently. We're assessing every day. Uh, as a coach, whenever I'm meeting with teachers, I talk about OCP, the triangulation of assessment, and it doesn't just come from the product. It also comes from your observations, it also comes from your conversations, OC, and then P, this product, right? It's all of that. So most teachers are assessing all the time. 
to see if these kids can do these skills. They're not just waiting for the day of the time. So I think that was a good point that you just made that we sometimes see that word. I think Dan hit on it uh, pretty well. But within using CFAs, what you're doing within your professional learning community is you're doing a couple of things. You're gauging, as Dan said, that Dan and I are both teaching a science course. Uh, again, it, my instruction may look a little bit different than Dan's, but we give this formative assessment that is common, that is the same. And we can do a couple of things. We can have that have conversations at our PLC. Hey, how do your students do? How my students do? Hey, yours, your your output here is looking better than mine. Let's have a conversation about what your instruction did. We may also see that, holy cow, neither of our instruction is where we needed to be. Our students are not yet ready for this summative assessment. So what's that mean and how are we going to circle back and and again do some reteaching or look at things you know and present it in a different way to ensure our, our students are ready to roll you know for that summative what we traditionally think of as the end of unit test or project that that product so that's the data at the plc meetings that the teachers bring uh each week or so they can assess how their how their instruction is going so what does it look like if um, you have all your formatives in the CF CFA and then you have a summative coming, a student's not meeting that CFA requirement? How does that look for the student and the teacher? Is the teacher doing one on one? Are they going to a different? Yeah, that's a really good question. And that's part of that PLC process. But we, we might have uh, a, a situation where we can use a small group instruction to get those students posted up to where they're ready. So it might also be the flight patrol that's universal for all three science teachers, for example. They might have to go back and reteach that and maybe pick a different method to reteach that. So it kind of depends on what data that we're getting from that CIA. That's the data that's being used to guide our instruction. What we may see from that CFA, man, we had another week planned for this, but my CFA is telling me my students are already there. So what, what do we do next now? You know, how do we supplement or push that instruction to a higher level? Because I'm not going to, I don't need to continue to, to, to teach this skill for another three, four class days because, okay, 90% of them got it. We're going to do this. And for those 10%, as Aaron was speaking, I might do a small group. I might do something uh, to address and, and continue to support them. So, like for a specific example, so like Dan, so like what what will you do this week for the kiddos that took the assessment this week who got like a two? What will that look like in your classroom? I'll have a couple of different options. They the the main idea is that they could advocate to me and they set up a conference with me, uh, whether that's in class time for those that you know we have time for. Uh, I have uh, slips that I give them so they can come down during their lunch hour if they'd rather have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Uh, there's always before after school. You know, we have we have other options for that as well. Uh, and we'll go through, you know, we'll, from their perspective, what went well on the assessment for you? Where was, you know, how do you identify the things that you struggled with? Uh, then we'll go back and look at the formative work that we did leading up to that to see if there was something that was missed in there, whether I missed a piece of feedback for them, if they missed a part of an assignment that they didn't do. If, you know, and we'll, we'll find where the problems were. Uh, and then we'll move into either some small group conferencing where I can work with a, a small group all at one time, individualize it, and then go back and look at how we're going to reassess if it is something that we can just do an addendum and add on to what they had already done, or if we need to go back and present the entire assessment or part of the assessment from a different point of view. You know, it, it may be the, you know, we, we did fossil record stuff. So, you know, if they were interpreting rock layers from a diagram, but for some reason that diagram wasn't clicking for them, I have, we have different ways we could do that. So we, we find what tool in the box is needed for them to improve their, their standing and then we also you know at that point sometimes it's if we have a student that assesses better verbally than on paper you know maybe it was a timing thing if there there's some accommodations that need to be made so that's when we open up the whole kit and, and see what we need to do to meet, meet what they need 
I think Dan illustrated a couple of really critical points there. One, there's multiple ways to assess. Uh, and two, what that reassessment looks like. Uh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't mean you had a 20 problem math test that you need to take another 20 problem math test. It might be the four of the five skill areas within that math test I had and the fifth one I didn't I didn't have. So you work with your teacher, you work through, it might be, hey, show me on a whiteboard that you can do this, or it might be, okay, here's three problems of this. Uh, now that we've gone through this reinstruction, uh, you've seemed to have it now, show me, show me that you have it. So I, the flexibility in, you know, it definitely, there is, there is a time component. There is an organizational component of how you structure your class and your instructional time, but it doesn't mean, you know, grading necessarily another five page paper or 50 question test. It, it can focus in on, on those particular skills of, or what you needed to reassess. And every once in a while, it comes down to a word on the test. Have them interpret that question completely differently. Mm -hmm. And when you sit and talk about it, mm -hmm. they go, oh, I thought it meant that. Well, mm -hmm. now we see where it went. That way. And mm -hmm. We can talk through it and we can check off that they had the skill, they had the, you know, the success criteria mastered. It was just an interpretation issue. Mm -hmm. Before I stop talking, I'll just say that, I mean, it sounds like you guys truly put some time into this discussion for the school year and made some good progress. And I appreciate not you guys, but everybody else that had a hand in the discussion and the back and forth. I mean, we'll say there's different groups on different sides of the table here. And I mean, what I'm hearing tonight is different stuff than I've heard in the past. And I appreciate that. I think it brought some clarity um, around the issue a little bit. Um, whether it was the old common assessments, but now the common formative assessments, whether it was checking for understanding, the fact of the matter is teachers are in their curriculum checking along the way. And yes, it goes to a grading of a, a standard now, but you still need to do these types of things to meet that standard. When I was coaching baseball, and if I had to teach my shortstop how to field the ball, how to step, and then how to throw, I mean, that, those were all those intricate things even in baseball that I could teach. And then I had to do the same thing in the classroom no matter what, what I was teaching. Prior to some of this, before our PLCs, and Andy, you and I have been here long enough, Crystal, Amy, you've been at this many years. The, the, the problem was is that there, there wasn't that commonality. The three of us could be science teachers, and Andy, you could be off doing one thing. You could be off doing another thing. I could be off doing another thing. And I would say, as a former principal, that was a hard, that was a challenge because you'd have parents complain, and it was really hard to defend when every classroom was was all over the place. So that was a challenge as a principal. And it didn't take away from the richness that we had individually, right. autonomy of teaching right. a particular subject and stuff. But this brings things more together and stuff to make sure that that we all are on the same page and we're all looking at the same uh, type of measurements or the SMART goals uh, of how we're assessing what our students are doing in practice. And I also just want to reiterate, I mean, one of the things we heard loud and clear from our teachers this summer was we need some common expectations, but we've got to balance that with giving teachers the autonomy to do what they need to do in their classrooms and not feel micromanaged. And so it's like we want to have some minimum expectations, but we want to give teachers and PLCs and grade level teams the opportunity to do what they need to meet the needs of their class too. So it's a balance of of being able to do that. Um, I guess, first of all, thank you guys for all of the work that you've done and for the people that aren't here tonight for, it seems like you guys have put in quite a bit of time and it's appreciated, I'm sure. Um, being a past teacher myself, I would imagine that for some teachers, this might feel like maybe some extra added work, maybe if it wasn't being done in the past, but overall, have you felt like there's been positive feedback um, for these changes and for the things that are being implemented? Um, do you feel like the there's buy-in here and that everybody's kind of getting on the same page? I think, you know, you know sometimes I think, you know, hearing from Andy uh, as a coach, maybe gets 
gets a more true message than you know going to the principal to say uh, maybe maybe you want to speak to that. Well, I don't like that because I talked to some kids mm. the other day that were talking about how much uh, more clear things were mm. and how much they were appreciating it. But yeah, the, the, the teachers that I work with, um, I think that they appreciate the clarity of the expectations. Okay. Um, and we have been really clear about that this year. And you know, being able to, I think it was a good point too, David, that you just made about we're still trying to, um, there's different kids in every room. I mean, every class is different. And, and teachers have to make decisions based upon the kids in the room. Mm -hmm. You can't have so much uniformity that you're ignoring the humanity, mm -hmm. <laughs> the individuals. And so uh, I feel like the, the response to that is, is pretty good. Good. Uh, that we're meeting both those needs. How about at the middle school? Yeah, I mean, that would probably be here quite a few of the same comments. The, you know, I, I can speak from within our PLC. We have our 6 8 science team when we sit down. Uh, having the clarity on what is expected has been very helpful. Uh, it allows us to reconfigure things to what our kids need, but also to maintain that that constant communication going out. And the feedback has been pretty good so far. Yeah. And we've talked about it before where SPG was kind of rolled out at really an unfortunate time. I mean, COVID hit and so that was rough for not only the teachers, but the parents and the students and everybody. So I think just getting that clarity is really important and key. And so it sounds like good stuff is happening, but thank you. Thank you all. I'm just curious that you said that, you know, each PLC kind of chooses which way. I don't remember what Andy said as far as, so the science department, do they all are they all aligned like by grade or as a six through eight as far as we're going to take the average versus the high or how does that work with the middle school and it's not they're not doing that at the middle school. okay they don't convert back to a letter grade okay so that's not a not okay. a factor there okay it's just a, that's a high school specific okay and it's by con it's by course right it's by course so yeah. so if you have multiple science nine Right. Okay. All has the same biology. All okay. Has the same. Okay. So not necessarily by department, but by class. Are you seeing a preference of one over the other? It was science, I think, or no? 60, 40. Oh, really? Oh, the way we did before. Okay. 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 Yeah. Do you, do you think that that'll be assessed uh, maybe at the end of a semester or at the end of the year to see if that's been we, the right fit for them? Yeah, we put it. We said it's a year. It's a year. Okay, and then we'll revisit it. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Well, that was one of the things we said that if you were going to make the change, you had to make the change yeah. because you couldn't change mid course and change the expectations for kids if it's in the syllabus. So, I think about the need to I've encountered a lot of appreciation, not just for the clarity of the expectations, but the support that we are giving mm. to teachers. So, That's um, the, the four principles you coach has been about five um, We don't just say, hey, this is how you do it. We go and we help. Um, we sit down with teachers, we uh, help them through the power school issues. Um, we do it together, we give them the support. We don't just help them. Yeah. And there's been a lot of appreciation. Yeah, and for, for me, I want to echo, you know, the, the appreciation because it, you know, from a parent's perspective, the communication like gets overwhelming <laughs> at some points, for sure getting all the emails, but like when you have time to sit down and read them, like if I have questions, it's like, oh, the answer is right there. You know, I can actually go through and find it if I if I slow down and read it. Um, having conversations with my son, you know, he's a junior now. Um, it's a lot clearer for him too. He loves that. Um, so uh, I have an appreciation for that. And, uh, you know, for, for Andy, <laughs> I remember sitting in your class and I don't know if you remember me or not, but forgettable, I get that. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm I'm not surprised. I appreciate what you said about the engagement part of it with the students. Um, it's so important, um, and you you did, you always did a great job of that. I remember those uh, those days in your room. So especially Pink Floyd, <laughs> Pink Floyd discussions. How could, how could you not remember this, this classroom? I know. Beatles. <laughs> I've been told him he was the first teacher at the high school that showed up, and all his walls were nothing but records. Yep. <laughs> Any other comments? Thank you. Again. Thank you so very much for being here. You really don't have to stay for the rest. <laughs> and thank you, Casey. Yes. Yeah. Yeah.
the amount of work you do. I don't work. Uh, the other item, um, informational item, Committee of the Whole on October 7th, Kate Teff, Director of Continuous Improvement Assessment, provided updates on the fall benchmark assessments and our September 30th staff development date. Motion to accept Teaching and Learning Committee report. Okay. Motion and second to accept the Teaching and Learning Committee report. All those in favor or any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. Budget Insurance Committee action items, gifts, grants, and bequests. Administration recommends approval to accept gifts, grants, and bequests received in September of 2024. Motion approved. Second. Motion second to approve the gifts, grants, and requests from September 2024. Is there any further discussion? If you turn with it, if. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying, I'm sorry, not none. There's no further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Discussion items preliminary 24-25. Our third Friday enrollment. What, uh, when's the next one? January. January. You know what our number would have been had all the kids been in school? You can count the kids even if they are in school. If they attend one day before and one day after the account, the account okay. um, we have very few kids that are considered no shows. Well, and if they are, we we've removed them off the record. I mean, right? So they would be off, yeah. So the Friday count is. And she's. Right. I don't know if this was asked last week, but in the numbers that we do have from the closing of the school of Lake Superior. And the number of students that went to Great Lakes and or um, or corners, do we have those numbers and did we lose yeah. any of those students? We did. Do you know what that is off the top of your head? Uh, 12 students from Lake Superior. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of the numbers that yeah, we talked about. Okay. Going to I suppose last year. If you were here, you'd have known that. Yeah, he was. No, I'm sorry. So that was kind of a breakdown. David's got all of it. <laughs> Not that one. All right. Anything else from anybody on that? The next is the actual transfer of service equalization aid, equalized property valuation, and levy information will be updated on October 15th, which is Wednesday, Tuesday, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow already. All right. So they have the big report. I'm going to work in Wasmo to get a better guess of our. Equalization aid. Um, it's pretty much what it was close to in July. Just the big unknown is what's happening in Milwaukee. So that's the that's the only. Thing. Um, everything was printed in the paper though. Friday. Friday the eleventh. Yeah. You staying up till midnight then? No, nah, they told me it's at eleven now. Eleven. Eleven a.m. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. Informational items. Director of Business Services David C provided updates on the following items: Lake Superior Elementary Building update. The budget hearing is scheduled for Wednesday, October 30th at 5 p.m. And our fund 10 revenue and expenditure expenditure preliminary reports were presented. Motion to accept the budget and insurance committee report. Second. Motion is second to accept the budget and insurance committee report. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Personnel negotiations committee action items. The administration recommends approval of the October 2020 4 New hirees and separations report. Motion approved. Second. Motion is second to accept the new hirees and separations report. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. There are no discussion items, no informational items. Motion accept personal negotiation report. Aye. Motion second to accept personnel negotiations committee report. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Legislative committee action items none. Discussion items none. Informational items. 137 school referendum questions will be on the November ballot. The November election is quickly approaching and the eyes of the nations are fixed on Wisconsin. While the presidential Senate new state legislative districts continue to draw attention, 
when Wisconsin voters go to the polls, they will also find 137 local school dis district referendums on the ballot in 120 districts. And there is a full article on this on the legislative legislative update on the WASB website. Motion accept legislative Second. Motion second to accept the legislative committee report. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Other reports by members of the board? I'm uh, excited to attend the one of the first career fairs at the high school, November 7th. It's architecture and construction, I think. Um, exciting. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think it'll be neat to see what, what happens at the uh, November 14th, the WIA sportsmanship. Also, when all the schools are in, in our building. Did we just have the Hall of Fame? Yes. Yeah. Two weeks ago. Two weekends ago. Yeah, it was very, very. It was very well attended. Uh, did miss the first part of it to the wedding, but um, the recipients. Uh, there was a there, there was a full thing in the paper. Uh, I don't know how many programs are left somewhere, but uh, it's fun. it's amazing the people that are coming in, the things that they've done. Um, we had some entertainment that night from uh, Daniel Singer. Just pretty neat and stuff. Uh, Daniel was was very talented when he was in high school back in 1992 when he when he graduated, and it was just so neat to see what he did. And he wrote a song about Superior, so he sang that right at the end. So it was really really cool. It was a great evening. And, uh, Ella, it, from what I heard, again I, I missed the first part of it, but the compliments, the everything that I heard after that, you and your group. Did an amazing job. You've got some go getters in your group. It's a small group. We got to figure out how to get more people involved. But they were so appreciative of having the hors d'oeuvre night. They're so appreciative of the way that you conducted the program and everything. And uh, it was the, the number of people that stayed afterwards was something else too. I mean, they stayed a half hour, forty minutes after the whole event and stuff in the school. So I, there's. You're right, people that worked. Caitlin Noel, Elise Sterling, Kinsman, uh, put on, they came with an idea of how we can jazz it up, make it more affordable for people to come rather than having a big sit down dinner. Um, our numbers are great. Um, there were, I don't want to use the word younger, um, but there were some Go ahead, uh, closer to graduating people in the faculty. <laughs> And so there was a lot of people who were trying to do as many as they could, young adults. Um, that fifty dollars for dinner and a program is kind of a lot. So um, it's it's definitely not a huge fundraiser, but it's it, you know it, it is a great time. So those people really helped a lot. Um, congrats to you again. I don't know how many bucks you get on the walls. Um, yeah, it, it was a it was a great week overall. So thanks to everybody for their help and funding all things. Yep, uh, at seven o'clock, uh, boys varsity soccer has their last home game um, as well. They had a big weekend this weekend, right? Yeah, they did really well mm -hmm. on both games. Any other district program highlights? Um, there is a lot. This is a very busy time of year. In addition to all the referendum work that we're doing, um, today is Indigenous Peoples Day. We had some different events going on in our schools. Some. Really cool events. I know you captured some of the festivities at the high school that'll probably get out. So thank you for doing that. Obviously, we had homecoming, tons of people at the homecoming football game. Um, and the and the parade was wonderful. We've got trunk or treats and fall festivals happening at all the elementaries. I'm doing trunk or treat this week. I'm not dressing up, but we'll figure that out later. Uh, no, I know. I was, sorry, I won't get to the game, but um what, any behavioral issues or improvements with the football game, especially having that many more people? I will say Sam Berman, the assistant principal, is outstanding and helped to kind of oversee and supervise some of that. We're getting better every time. I mean, oh. just going to be continuing to remind kids what, what we expect of them. And okay. we have great staff who are helping. But does that sound right? You've grown and educated a lot since August 23rd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I... It was one of the most attended games that I've been a part of in five years. Yeah. And, it, and, and I mean, I, we haven't 
great group of kids and great and it's um you know people are here to support our kids they're yeah. not here to just come around so that's a big thing we're here to watch here to watch football and um yeah I, i'd like to again thank everybody for their help in supporting that keeping we want everybody of all age at the games um but we wanted to cheer a team on and, and that happened last friday mm -hmm. yeah we're looking right. forward to this friday night we can have the same problem yep a couple other things. Um, Wednesday, I believe it is the 16th. Yeah, is um, Unity Day, and so people are encouraged to wear orange to promote kindness and inclusion across all of our schools. We've got parent-teacher conferences coming up in October, and you know, one of the things, David, I think we probably should get on the um, agenda uh, for one of our future meetings is um, bringing the Hope Squad in from the high school to get some updates because I know that they've been doing a lot of work around suicide prevention at the high school. So I think we would. Might be good to bring them out, and um, they were just at the school for us this week, so we should probably bring them here. We have a new video up online, so you should check that. Yeah. There's a lot going on. Yeah, I saw it. It's very good. Yeah. All right. Consideration of bills and pre-approved bills. Motion to approve. Okay. Motion to second to consider. Pay the bills. Consider to pay. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Behold, motion carries. It's time. Is there a motion to motion adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Okay. Second to adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Good night and thank you. Could you